I got a million and two forms here. And when I say a million and two, I'm not really exaggerating very much. And this isn't even all of them. I've got so many more forms. And you, you are potentially a client or a customer of um, an agent. And you're wondering, what the heck do all these things mean? It's totally overwhelming. But if you give me just about five minutes, I'll go through this first one that you're supposed to receive and you'll get a little bit better information. Hey, my name is Stella Tooten. I have been a real estate agent long enough for a lot of these forms to be changed and then come back again and be changed again and come back again and again and all the way back to what they were originally. So stick with me and hopefully I can give you a little bit of information about them. And if you'd like a copy of any of these forms, just so you can read over them or an explanation of any of them, if you'll just comment forms below, I'll get that information over to you or we can have a little conversation up to you. Um, just be in touch. That's okay. So first let's talk about this document. This document is a form that you are by law in South Carolina supposed to be given at the first substantial time that you are having a conversation with your real estate agent. And this is not a form that's making you come to some kind of agreement. This form is there to let you know that you have choices in how you want to be represented in the state of South Carolina. And it's interesting because not every single state has different types of representation. I know my sister practices in another state and they don't have documents like this. They don't have what's called buyer's agency agreements or if they do, it's not in practice where it is here. Um, so it's very interesting to see if you're coming from out of state, you may have experienced a very different situation in the state that you're in and be like, what the heck is this? Why is my agent having me review this? So. You're not saying you have to sign something when you go over this. You are going to have to sign this document saying that we gave it to you, but you aren't going to be deciding whether or not you are um, agreeing in that moment to, to what's going on. So the thing with South Carolina is, like I said, by law, we have to give you this at the first time that we have a conversation with you so that you can decide how you want to be represented by the person that you are potentially working with. It's important to note that this agreement or the agreement that you have is with the brokerage that your licensee, I'm a licensee, I'm an agent, is with and not with the licensee themselves. So if you're working with me, you're actually going to be signing an agreement that says that you are working with Keller Williams, Charleston, and with my broker. And then I am underneath him as a licensee or an agent. There are two different ways that you can enter into a relationship with an agent in South Carolina. You can choose whether or not you want to work with an agent as a customer or as a client. And I have no idea why they picked those particular words because they sound almost exactly the same, but it is what it is. So if you work with someone as a customer, what you are saying is that you are not entering into a written agreement with the brokerage or with the agent. Just because you're not entering into a written agreement doesn't mean that your um, agent doesn't still owe you some type of duties. Um, there are some, some duties that are specific, whether you're an agent who is in a committed, <laughs> committed relationship, sorry, we've DTR'd it, this is defining the relationship. Um, that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> The good news is that whether or not you are a customer or a client, we as agents still owe you some level of service. So some of those duties, in fact, all of them, I'm going to tell you what they are. We're supposed to present you with offers in a timely manner. We're supposed to account for the money in the transaction that's been given to us. I don't hold money, so that won't be me. We are supposed to provide an explanation of the scope of the level of service that we're going to provide you. We're supposed to be fair and honest, and we're supposed to give you accurate information. We owe you limited confidentiality, but we do owe you confidentiality. And we have to disclose any adverse material facts that are about the transaction or the property that we are um, working with. So, for example, if they are going to be putting a highway through the property in five years and we know it, we have to actually know it, then um, we're supposed to let you know that the house will probably be bulldozed in five years. 
Um, and so if there is no written agreement, then you are a customer. Now, here's what I do when I talk with my clients. Get out my handy dandy highlighter and I highlight this part in here at the very end that says, as a customer, as a customer, you should not expect a brokerage firm or its licensees to promote your best interest. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to be sabotaging you, but what it does mean is that if we're getting down to the nitty gritty of negotiating and things like that, we're not really there for negotiating. We're just there to kind of help you with the paperwork. And in my mind, you need somebody that helps you with more than that. You need somebody that helps you with comps. You need somebody that helps you with making sure that the house hasn't been on the market too long and who's going to help you with finding out whether or not the, it's gone through inspections properly or finding the inspections or making sure you understand your due diligence. Those are all things that as a customer, you are not owed by the brokerage or the licensee. Part of what you are owed and part of what you'll get essentially when you are working with someone as a customer is you're managing the transaction. You're just kind of like the paper pusher. And I know there are a lot of people out there that think that that's all the that agents do, but I can assure you there is so much more than that. And um, you get what you pay for. You get what you sign up for in that instance. Now let's talk about what it means to be a client of a brokerage. If you are a client of a brokerage, you are going to be entitled to more services than a customer would be entitled to, but you're also going to enter into a written agreement. And if you're doing a listing, if you're selling your house, that's going to be a listing agreement. And if you are trying to go buy a house, you're looking to find one, then you are going to enter into what is called a buyer's agency agreement. Like I said, not every state has those and not every state uses that as their um, normal way of doing business, but in South Carolina, that's what we do. So I mentioned that there were some uh, extra services that you would receive if you were a client of a brokerage, and it's in real estate school, they teach you it's old car, O-L-D-C-A-R, obedience. So if you, if I tell you we need to list this house for three fifty, and you say, no, we need to list it for seven fifty, then I can't turn around and go list it for three fifty. I owe you the obedience of doing what you guys want me to do. L is loyalty. My loyalty is to you in the transaction. It's not to me. It's not to the people on the other side of the transaction. It is loyalty to you and your best interests. D is disclosure. I owe you disclosure about the things that I know. So if you're buying a house and I know that they're putting that highway through it, then I owe you disclosing that. All right, C is confidentiality. I owe you confidentiality because your business is your business and it's nobody else's. I'm not here to tell the agent on the other side of the transaction that you had $7 billion in the bank and that you would be able to buy this one and 25 other because that would make them not come down in the price when they need to. Accounting. That's A. Accounting is making sure that I am keeping track of the funds that are put in and out of my care during the transaction. I don't typically hold on to things like earnest money. We're not allowed to hold that at my brokerage, but if we were, it'd be my responsibility to keep up with where that is. And R is reasonable skill and care. Now that means as a real estate agent, you expect that I know how to fill out these documents. That is a reasonable expectation. As a real estate agent, you expect that I know how to work the MLS. That is a reasonable expectation. Um, the, that is part of reasonable skill and care. And also, some of the other client level duties are things like counsel and assistance in negotiations. And those are things that you can expect from an agent as part of client level duties. Now, when we get under the client level duties, we have a couple of different options. So there's always this, this single agency, which is just me, I'm representing you, you're buying a house, you're buying it from another brokerage, it's all easy peasy, lemon squeezy, whatever, that single agency. But we get into what's called dual agency and designated agency. I have to say, this part of the uh, conversation about agency is one of the things that most people have the hardest time describing when they're trying to describe it to their clients, and it's one of the things that most people find the most challenging when they're going through the test 
for real estate school. There's not a lot that you take in the real estate class that's everyday stuff, except for this agency stuff really comes into play. So we've got designated agency and we've got dual agency, okay? So let's talk about dual agency. Dual agency is when an agent represents both the buyer and the seller in a transaction. So for example, let's say I have an open house and I have the listing and it's this amazing property and you are driving by and you say, oh my gosh, I wanna go in and see this house. And you go into the house, you fall in love and you're like, let's just put in an offer. Can you help me write that offer? I would have to go through and explain to you about you know, this agency stuff. I'm going through all this with you. But I also, at that time, would have to get the permission from the seller to represent you and from you to know that I was also being representing the, the seller. So it's a written document that you have to sign that says that you're aware that I would be doing both sides of this transaction. So basically, under dual agency, your agent is representing both sides of the transaction and they are not able to advocate for one of the, the, the clients over the other. So it's one of those situations where you are, it's pretty, I usually do it when it's kind of cut and dry and it's pretty easy and there's not a lot of negotiating going on. Now, designated agency. Designated agency, if you remember, your agreement is with the brokerage and it is not with the individual agent. And so, for example, Keller Williams is fairly large and we have a big presence here. We have a lot of listings. If you go into a house that is for sale by Keller Williams agent, and you're with me, and I'm also a Keller Williams agent, then we would have to identify that we are in what's called designated agency at that point. Your brokerage houses both of the agents who are working on the transaction, but we're both working for our client's best interest. And you're just under the umbrella of the um, the, the Keller Williams or or whatever brokerage that you're you're in. So it's identifying that there is an agreement in place with the brokerage for both of these agents that are underneath the brokerage and you're just trying to disclose that you know that both these people work for the same brokerage. All right, so that's it. That's all this document is and, and your agent's gonna get you to sign it here. You don't have to actually pick what you're doing yet, but they're gonna have you sign it to say that you did receive it. And then if you sign an agency agreement with them, there's gonna be this whole other place in there where you have to check and say that you did receive this and that they did go over it with you because this is a very important thing for people to understand that they do have choices. So your choices, again, are to be working and represented by an agent, which would be being a client of the brokerage and signing those um, agreements, the, the listing agreement or the buyer's agency agreement, or you can represent yourself all day long. You can, it's fine. And in that case, you wouldn't sign anything. So that's it. I hope that makes sense. They're kind of um, dense legalese documents, but we're here to help explain these things to you. And so if you ever have any questions about any of them, I'm happy to answer them for you. If I don't know the answer, if it's too lawyery, I'll go talk with our attorneys and figure out the answer for you. So just give me a shout and I hope that was helpful. Stay tuned. I'll see if I can get you some more information on other documents that we have.